We're on. We're live. We We're are back. live. We're back for another session of live fly time. Live fly Wednesday time, nights. Wednesday night. <laughs> um, please, as we did before, let us know if uh, if you can hear us. That makes us feel a little bit more confident that all these wires are connected correctly. There's a lot, of course. It's a, it's quite the studio. Brian hooked it all up tonight. He did <laughs> yeah. all of it. Um, I did none of this. It stresses <laughs> me out way too much. He's I'm, so stressed out. <laughs> I'm just the idea, man. I'm the big picture guy. Did you cry Thanks, it out? Matt. Cry it out in the back real quick? I did. Do I still have marks from, like, pounding my back? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, it's always fun to do these it's things, but fun. it is a little nerve-wracking. I it's a little say. nerve-wracking. That's okay. That's okay. It's fun, though, right? I mean, I think everyone enjoys it's, it. It's really fun. I hope. And I know that our we hear a lot of positive feedback. See, Nathan says he can hear us, so I can I can just crank that on the, on the screen. Right. Everybody can see that. Movie Everybody's is muted. What do you mean? That's okay. All right. Because we're the we're the pro stereo. That's us. I'm going to fade like the, the music. Movie. You like that? Yeah, music. Yeah. yeah, it's like... Should we introduce our our mystery guest? Our mystery <laughs> guest. Road warrior mystery guest. Road warrior. Just we can, got they can some hear you, but they can't see you yet. Floating the Mayo section. Yeah. This and, guy. Uh, this guy is like burning the candle on both ends. We really appreciate Alex Lafkus. Alex Lafkus, everyone. Trevor City's <laughs> finest streamer ah! angler. So... We're super happy to have you, Alex. Thank you so much for doing this. Very happy to have you. Actually, l- the video we did last year Got the was most the most, v- I think we're close to 10,000 views already somehow. Dude, you're a superstar. Um, but, you know, not don't well, we'll, don't we'll pump up for, your ego we'll too far because I know, I know there's a kid at home <laughs> who's watched it at least a thousand times himself. <laughs> Nate, I know you're watching. <laughs> I can't believe he's here not freaking out like. Creeping like, hey, in dude, the windows, so, oh, so, oh my gosh, this is this is fun. I think I feel like we've hit the stride after episode one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you got to. This is good. With, we have a lot of new equipment. Matt we have uh, a, has worked really hard. We have a huge week going on. I don't know if. Oh my um, goodness, we have a lot we're, going. We're on. on hump day here. This is midweek for us. Uh, yeah, we had we, live, had we had fly tying last night fly at last Silver night. Spruce, which was a lot of fun. If you missed it should catch the next one it's the week after the next at um remind me here i'm drawing a blank fresh coast fresh coast brewing on traverse city or uh, traverse city's front street Absolutely. which is a lot of fun good brews good times great good people beers. yeah great yeah. environment and then uh, sounds like night, we're sponsored right right no we have tomorrow night we have men's night at the men's show. night so I made men's uh, night is back. I totally forgot to bring you a crock pot. White I am bean sorry. chicken chili for tomorrow night. That's all right. I made it last night overnight. Stayed up all night making it uh, in the it's crock true. pot. I believe and then it. I'm making another batch tonight, and we should be all good to go tomorrow. There might be some beverages. Possibly. We were warned by the DDA not to have too much. You Do know? you think we were targeted in that situation? Absolutely oh, not. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're not even part of the DDA. I know. I know. They're probably watching. They're all. <laughs> no, mostly just the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Russ. Come on. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> How could it not be? <laughs> um, oh, my gosh. And then don't forget on Sunday. Jack, Sunday. Sunday. We have Sunday. a book signing actually on Sunday with Jack Ford. Jack Ford. Uh, if he, uh, if Jack, he, if you're watching, let me know what time it is. Yeah, and let still us still haven't heard back from you. Books, uh, so. I would love to know what time. It'll be. I don't think email works where he lives. Maybe. Probably not. That's okay. That's yeah, we're looking today. forward to it. <laughs> he he, Jack's such a great guy. It'll fishing. be a good time. It'll be a good time. So, uh, let's see. Did I forget anything? Uh, there's, if you haven't done your holiday shopping yet, there's still time. Please. Just get it done. Brian like drove a hundred miles an hour to the UPS store today. I know to get. I know I did. And I, I found somebody's in. wallet in their parking lot, and I returned it to them. So did that pay off for you? Uh, you know, I got a drink and soup at Stella. Out Ferris of that. Bueller, you're my hero. It nice. was. I'm Abe Froman, sausage <laughs> king of Chicago. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, thank goodness I didn't load any of the sound bites. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, Alex, you went fishing today. You should probably tell us, I mean. Not good. No. It's well. Not, well be good. I no. Whatever. It's I mean, we don't have to I'm talk about it. It looks, uh. At least you didn't get one burn. It's going to be 60 mile hour winds tomorrow. That's why we went today. Yeah. And it was, okay. I mean, we had our shots, but the morning fished fine, and then the afternoon was not good. Yep. Well. So. What you had a bite window early? I don't know. Couldn't yeah, tell. where there's fish, they bit. Where it sucks, it still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> kind of how it goes down there. Oh, this has been terrible for 20 years. Still is. But how do you think the uh, spawn went on on that section? Everything should have been good. Low water. Low water is usually good for spawning, you know. Um, you know, if you're down there enough, you realize, you know, like some zones didn't have beds that usually do, some did that usually don't. So, you know, it's just kind of fluctuating, and you kind of see it throughout the year. When you see, boy, I haven't been moving any fish through here, and then you go, oh, wow, there's no fish spawning here like they always do. It's like, okay, well, we're missing an age class here, missing an age class there, but all of a sudden there's nice ones here, and it just it fluctuates over there. I think it fluctuates there more than a lot of places because it's shallow and the winters are hard. Absolutely. You know, it gets so really cold over there. Really cold. Yeah. Really cold. So I think you get that natural fluctuation. Um, it's a lot more drastic. You know, you start heading down towards Baldwin, and even the lower Manistee, you got those sandy, deep holes, middle Manistee that don't freeze up. You know, we get anchor ice because it's all gravel, and that really wipes those fish out. Um, so it's up and down, but it's been good overall down there this year, I'd say. Good. Better than it was. That's Worse fantastic. Than it used to be, but whatever. People ask me. They, people have been asking me actually lately, kind of what, <clears throat> you know, how good did it used to be? You know, well, you know, the fish were dumber, so they ate the fly better. But I think as far as populations, you know, having the one fish limit down there has made a big difference. Like there's more fish, I think, on a year to year basis than there used to be. Um, the guys who want to harvest five fish tend to spend their time up river, which isn't good because that's a section they don't stock, but you know, I think it's getting a little less harvest. Uh, you know, McKinley to 4,001 still a five fish limit and there's like nothing down there. So, but that's close this time of year anyway. So we'll see. Um, but that got hit. There were guys fishing it, three bait guys walking around at night, fishing minnows, walking like from the best hole to the best hole down there a couple of years ago. And like, I quit doing the hex thing, but the guys I know that do the hex thing will tell you, like, there ain't no fish where there used to be. Like, wow. they wiped it out, hmm. um, which is easy to do when there's five fish in a hole and four good holes. Yeah. No, you know, it is. That's it's short. It, it really is. Uh, I saw that on the pine yeah. uh, years ago when I yeah. guided that. There were guys from Cadillac that would come in and just oh, yeah. cricket those. Oh, yeah. You'd see big stringers, and then yep. it Couple took years, four or five like, years to <clears throat> rebound. <clears throat> you know, and they even stopped fishing because, you know, I'd talk to them like, oh, there's no fish left, like, because you guys yeah. took them all. Yeah. We got another person who lives in one of the cabins. They lived on, like, a great run where it was, like, one of those first, one of the spots where you're like, okay, get ready. <clears throat> well, didn't see any for a few, you know, like, what's going on? What's going on? Well, one of the guys who sits down there and fishes watches them go out there with a rappel, like, cast off the bank and take one every night. Well, well when there's six fish, it takes about a week and they're all gone. Yep. You know. It's just, it's low density stuff and, and somebody figures it out and they can really weed them out quick. So, yeah, and there's nothing illegal about it. That's fine. No, it's... there isn't. There isn't, but that's no, it's just what it is. So whatever, who cares? Well, cool. What are we tying tonight? Um, well, I'm not very creative, so I'm basically tying similar stuff to last year, a similar fly to last year, except I've been tying it small. Um, so it's the same kind of brush head deceiver. Um, but I, I've been tying it in about a three inch variety, just a little bit smaller, you know, especially last year we really saw it cause we had low water pretty much all year, but the fish were really keen and on smaller bait fish. And especially it seemed like personally what I saw was like, you'd have windows where they chase a the big fly, but the second that kind of shut off, if you switched to the smaller stuff and worked it, it, it stayed pretty consistent. Um, this is another fly I ran some day. I took a client down, at Hoden Pile this year, fishing smallmouth, and we did good on it too. So it's just a small, easy minnow to fish, um, super easy to cast. Anybody so you can, can throw, throw this with things. a six weight. Yeah, seven, like, done. Nice, done. Easy as can be. Um, 
Yeah, so that's it's worked well. Now I'm tying it kind of on a trout size, so I'm sticking to the hooks I like for trout, which are the B10s's and a one. You could even go down to a two, but I don't think there's any reason to go down to below a one. Um, I've been using some of the the A Rex Trout Predator one odds. That's kind of I think after about a one odd, if I'm not mistaken, I think the two odds get pretty heavy gauge, and I kind of back off them at that point. But I've been using the Trout Predator ones too for this hook. I just pulled out a B10S one because I have more of them, I guess. Um, doesn't really seem to matter. If I was tying them for smallmouth and wanted a little bit more, I'd have no hesitation going to the one out or two out B10S. I just don't like it for trout. They eat totally different. Smallmouth choke things. You got a second to hammer them. Trout swipe and nip, and you got to stick them. Yep. So that's all. Nothing fancy, but it's it's. You you observe it enough. You miss enough fish in your life on one and one out and two out B ten S's, and you start figuring something else out, um, which has happened. Did that for years. Before we get started, uh, just to everyone watching, if if you got questions for Alex, use mm -hmm. the the question yeah. section right down below. And if you can't see it, it's because you don't have a YouTube login. You actually you need to have a login. And uh, while you're logging in, you should probably just go ahead and subscribe. I mean, subscribe to our channel. <laughs> and, just, and keep questions coming because I keep the questions coming. We had some I, crazy had ones last year. We had like oars and like Good. all sorts of. Because I yeah. want to get out of here and go to bed. And I'll tie this fly so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be out of here in no time. And that's one thing that I do do is like about every fly I tie is not too involved. And you can bang a couple out before you go fishing, whatever it is. Because I'm not into the, you know. You only need so much. You only need so much. And if you can't tie a couple before you walk out the door, what's the point? I would totally agree with that. I did a smallmouth fly last week, Alex. It was like one of those like, oh, I'm looking at the sky going, ooh, I need some of this color in yeah. my box. Yeah. And, you know, that's the beauty of these guide flies. They're effective the and simple, and you can tie them within – no time. Probably less than five minutes. Yeah. You know, once yep. you once you get them down, you yep. tie a couple it's dozen of easy. these, and it's easy. I know. And it, it spoils you. Well, and, I mean, it's fine. You can sit around in the winter and tie fancy stuff if you want, but I ain't doing it. I'm going to go home. I'm going to go to Arkansas with my three of each color, and I'm going to go through a couple one day and say I need more of those and sit down and tie two more that night. And if I got something that's involved and takes 45 minutes, it isn't going to get done. So I'm not going to do that. Um, Joyce no. Haxton says hi. She's tuned in. Joyce. Hello, Joyce. <laughs> Floated by her house the other day. Ah, nice. Joyce and Al. Yep. Great. Some day. of our favorite folks at the yep. shop. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely quite great pleasant, people. Quite great pleasant. folks. They abandon us for the summers and go to Montana now, of course. Oh. I, don't yeah. know. I think you catch bigger fish here than you do out there these days. Uh -oh. That's Ooh, especially good. after the, the man <laughs> on, the, on the Madison. Ooh. I was talking to some of my friends out there that were helping bucket those fish back in and it sounds pretty dire well i want to cut the boats down yep well you know whatever we, we may sad. lose one of our alex cameras i just got a high temp notification unfortunately uh -oh. but the right. vice cam is working fine so we don't uh need to see them anyway. <laughs> they can see what you're tying at the very least that, so that's should i start well, there's, there's nothing really fancy about these, so we can continue our conversation because I don't really need to think. Um, one thing I will say is I tie these with the thick Danville, what is it, 210? Yeah. Because usually I'm starting with that to kind of close the eye off on these shanks. A lot of times these shanks have a little gap there, and I'll just build a little thread in there, and that's kind of seals it off. So do that and kind of bend the shank together. So this is a 10 millimeter shank. You can do it on 15s, whatever. 20s kind of seem to get a little longer, whatever. It doesn't it doesn't matter. But this is a 10 because I forgot my 15s at home. So there you go. There's the science behind it. And then, you know, you can get kind of fussy on the tails. Like if you want to put them on the side to side, whatever, to make sure they're covering up the metal, you know, go for it. So I you have two tails there? Yep, two, one, go, you know. And you married them up? Shiny sides nice. out. Mar yeah, married up. I think that's Did you spend about, uh, what, 20, 25 minutes lining those up? Like uh, <laughs> right. a lot? Of like like a Mr. Mark? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm pretty lazy. I know it's, well, the second you put it in your box, it's going to be destroyed. So right. does it matter? Gets eaten once, thrown on the patch, and then it sits there and dies. But they, they ride well. I mean, I think. I don't know. They go back to get. It doesn't matter. Once they're kicking in yeah. the water, they kind it's, of marry back, come up. back together. So what's it matter? 
And uh, I you know, think like, we the one thing about crushed these a lot of people right there. <laughs> What's spent, that? I know we just crushed some people that spend some time. Uh, right. Joe, I'm looking at you. Sorry, bud. Uh, <laughs> do it. If it makes you happy and you think it's necessary, do it. Good idea. Um, I would say, though, like, the nice thing about these flies, the way you reverse tie the bucktail and use that brush, like, the biggest problem I have with them is eventually, and this doesn't even happen very often, is the brush pulls down on the on the reverse tied hair. Which, boom, cut it off, a couple more wraps, and you're done. But the fly is going to last forever. And by doing the reverse tie on the bucktail, you're going to keep that same profile without it, you know, it doesn't get crushed. It doesn't get destroyed. So they last. Yeah, the feathers might not look as clean and pretty as they did, but the fly is going to last and be fine. So. Then when I tie, I'm just going to do a little wrap, which is probably unnecessary, but I can't just leave the whole shank there. Um, I'm just going to wrap a little more. This is Chinese strung saddle, just something kind of cheap, easy, finer points. Like you don't need a really big profile back there. Um, and I'll just wrap that kind of forward and just give it a little collar. So, you know, it's a little bit more presentable, not much, but a little bit. Like I don't even have flash in there. You know, you could... Put a little flash out the back if you want. I've kind of, with the body wrap these days, if you're using some of that body wrap, it gets, oh, thank you. It gets, uh, there's plenty of flash. I've been backing off the flash whenever possible. I just, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know how much I gain from it. And sometimes I think flies work better without flash. I think a lot of people are using a lot of flash, which is probably why I'm not. Um... You know, granted, like in Russ's little flash monkey, like, yeah, that's a very important part of the fly. But a lot of my more dulled down natural looking stuff, I kind of. I found this year, even with the smallmouth, the natural um, colors like were flash. working better because it was so low and clear. Yeah. Yeah. And I think part of it has to do with the time I spend in Arkansas, too, and seeing those fish get lacerated. And if you're waiting for them to do something stupid, you're going to be waiting a long time. Yeah, the 17 to 21 inch or whatever, that doesn't matter. Those are juveniles. They're not the full adult fish. So what can you learn from them? Not much. It's like catching 10-inch smallmouth. What, you know, that doesn't tell you what the 18 and 20 inches are doing. I mean, that's just, you know, it's a little different deal. You probably see the same thing with your muskie. Yes. Small muskies are stupid. Big muskies you can't catch. Somewhere in between, there's a nice balance. Oh, musky fish. So sad. I was talking to Willen, and he's like, He's going to go help Blaine down in Virginia this winter. And I'm like, oh, you bastard. And I, so I'm like, what do you got going? He goes, wow. Well, well, Larry's going to come down the first week so because he's been fishing with Dahlberg a bunch. Sure. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that really sucks, buddy. Sorry to hear. He's such a fun guy when I was oh, yeah. repping. Oh. And he is the most down-to-earth oh, yeah. individual ever. And oh. he is he is he and Tim Rajeff might be the biggest kids I've ever met. Yeah. Oh, it's it's something. When yeah. they go out and they catch a bunch of fish throughout the year, and they have fun in Virginia, that's for sure. That's great. Yep. So, he, but Chris is going to be down there helping Blaine, and that that's a really cool deal down there. So, they'll, good they'll, for those two guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, and he knows, you know, Blaine can trust him because he knows he's not going to be there all the time. I mean, he does his Wisconsin thing, and Blaine's getting busy. So, I don't, you know, it works out good for both ends. I think so far, you know. Yeah. Never know. You never know how those things are going to go, though. You could always extend this out with beads if you wanted to also. I don't, you know, I'm trying to get a smaller fly. You know, a lot of these I tie, if I want to keep them small and on two hooks, I'm doing a one in the front and a two in the back, and I can still keep them down in that four-inch size range. So this is, I'm trying to keep it more like three, three and a half. This will probably end up a little long because my tails are a little longer. Mm -hmm. um, but whatever, just dark, this 30-pound Maxima Chameleon, no big deal. Um, and you don't have to like loop it or anything fancy because there's no hook back here, so it doesn't really matter. You just give yourself that nice little loop off the back so it'll kick and not foul too much. Eh, it'll catch itself every once in a while. When those flies are catching on themselves and fouling, 90% of the time it's the person rushing their back cast, you know, like that's or a fish swiping at it and knocking that back around it. So that's one of the giveaways if you had a bite or just hit something. You know, it is if your fly's coming in fouled and stuff, that's a lot of times a fish that maybe did need it and blew up behind it. Like, you'll feel a little slack generated in the line or something. You'll lose some contact. 
um, but your fly will be fouled, and you can question it. And that's it, usually a fish, you know. That's what I've seen. That's visually you see it enough, and you're like, wait a minute. And then your fly comes in fouled, and you're like, you just pushed it. And then you start realizing I felt that, and now I feel that, and then my fly comes in fouled. Okay, what was wrong? But you know, whatever, whatever. These don't fall too bad. So that's it. Yeah, it's going to be a little bigger than I wanted, but whatever. It's fine. We don't really care that much. What colors do you tie this in? <clears throat> whatever, you know, more bait fish stuff. I've kind of got that. Olives. White and olive, olive and ginger. Mm. Might be more do you do these in some ginger. Yellow? What's that? You do these in yellow too? Oh, a straight yellow, yeah. banana peel. That worked for the smallmouth <laughs> last year, you know. Like, Some chartreuse. And Smallies oh, love yeah. yellow. Chartreuse, chartreuse, I know. All right. Yeah. But it shows up right. Like, if you're fishing enough and you're out there and, like, you start seeing, looking in that glare and it, the water, you can't really see anything, and you put yellow on, it pops a lot of the time when it's like that. So those fish are seeing it the same way, you know. Like, and that's one thing I really picked up on that. A um, few years ago, fishing into dark, I was like, which I hate to do, but anyway, I go to bed early. Um, but anyway, it was like getting low light, you know, which I consider dark, you know, it was scary for me out there. And uh, you was going to that straight yellow would always seem to generate a couple bites late in the day. Mm. Like right when it's like, man, I can't see anything. I can't so put that banana peel out there and rip it. And that's like, oh, there it is. And the fish responded. It just shows up a little bit better to them. So... <clears throat> That's what I noticed, you know. Sometimes it's that, and other times it's you want it to match the watercolor. So even brown, brown and tan's been good, you know, just something blah. Something bright or something blah, one or the other. How often do you, uh, like, you run through some areas that you feel that there are fish there, and then, what, you know, how often do you change up your colors as you're, as you're God, doing God, it this? really depends, you know. Like, today was a struggle for me because I had one angler. Whenever you have one angler and you go to a low density fishery, it's like, was it, you know, it sometimes will take me two or three spots to figure it out, you know, like, because you're like, well, you missed the cast. Was there just one not going there? You know, a lot of times I start out, you know, I always try to do opposite, you know, like white and black, olive and white, you know, it's something like just go polar opposites to start the day when I have two guys and usually you can iron it out and then, or, you know, smaller and weighted big and unweighted and just, you know and like you start going okay okay and you can put the pieces together a lot quicker with two when you got one guy it's a little tougher um yeah it it can be you know like today i ran through a zone where i saw a fish the other, last time i was through there and uh <clears throat> didn't see anything so then i switched flies and then i went through some runs i had a little less faith in, you know, and then didn't see anything. So you're wondering, well, you know, should I, how, how much do you really know? Right. Which was kind of the problem. But you always second guess yourself. Always. Like, All, unless you're, uh. and usually when they're biting, it doesn't matter. It hits the water and something comes screaming out and kills it. So, you know, you beat yourself up. That's one advantage of a jet boat. You know, go through the Melkron, switch it up, go through the Melkron again and go, oh, okay, that's what it is. You know, when you're just kind of paddling your way down, it's a little tougher. You know, if you're on a high volume water, you know, you can go three bends and switch. You know, if you go, you know, a lot of places, it's holy water, upper mean, whatever. Some, the Pier Marquette, for God's sake, there's fish everywhere in that river. I know. You know, you go a bend or two and don't see something, switch it up, switch it up, switch it up. You'll find something they'll eat. There's just too many in certain areas like that. Um, the low density, big rivers are kind of tough and it, it can be easy certain times of year cause they're just suicidal and they'll eat anything. But after they've seen a lot of flies and seen a lot of pressure, it kind of changes and you got to kind of fine tune stuff. That's, that's a game. That's a game. It's always trying to crack the code. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you find like when they're biting, they're biting, you know, like you can definitely change colors to figure it out. Some days it's not going to matter. You know, some days it doesn't seem to matter for a few hours, then it gets particular. You know, it's just, it's an ever-changing thing. And a lot of times, like, what I like to try to observe is, like, okay, well, we haven't seen anything, and the light angle's changed. You know, it's definitely different light out here now, so 
maybe we ought to switch. So, you know, that I do that a lot. Like, oh, I don't know, the light's a little different now. Let's let's do something different. Um, I see that a lot when I'm fishing. On the white, there's just a lot of fish, so you can kind of learn it. I mean, not every day. <laughs> some days you swear there's none. Um, Even that's a, a sterile ditch some days? Oh, God, it's so <laughs> bad. It can be so bad. Um, yeah, and it's bad there because you can go through, like, where you're like, there are so many fish here and nothing looked. Like, at least it when you go to, like, the lower Manistee or Mayo or something, you're like, well, maybe we didn't get in front of one yet because there's no fish here. You know, down there it's like, oh, my God, get me out of here. <laughs> so what are you tying in right there? What fl- so, yeah, what flash is that? Palmer chenille. I Palmer think that's chenille. what they call it. Or yeah. this might be the. That's palm. That looks like. It uh, might, no, it's not. Is that cactus? Palmer, it's, the, it's the cactus, the cactus. one they only make in pearl. Yeah, that's the cactus yeah, chenille like is what that is. Cactus chenille, which is the it's either obnoxiously large XL or that medium, size you're using there. Which is large. Yes. But it's really medium. It's kind of like medium Palmer chenille. And with that medium Palmer chenille, that gets kind of long. So I've been really, like, I trim that down a lot. Like, you know, maybe if I'm running a two-hook fly on the front hook, I'll leave it long. But I shorten it up. My dislike for flash. Hide it, hide it, hide it. And then I always give myself a ton of room for the reverse tie. Because that, I mean, this doesn't matter. This is just filler on the hook. So give yourself room to, you know, put that bucktail in and flip it backwards. Because that's what's going to eat up hook shank. And then that gives you options. You know, if you jam it too far forward, a lot of times you're just cranking it on a couple wraps of brush. If you put it further back, it gives you a little bit more room to play with the crafter and taper the crafter down so that it'll it'll lay in there a little bit nicer. Um, I wish I had tied these tails in a little shorter, but oh well, I haven't tied one since spring. So here we are, whatever. While you're uh, grabbing materials there, yeah. uh, we had a question from Nathan uh, who's curious about how the time of year affects your fly size, or does it? Or is it no, other conditions? I can't say it really does. Um, water conditions affect fly choice. Clarity. Yeah, level. Yeah. You know, when it's high enough, like, give them a target sometimes. You know, like, that's that's a lot of how I look at it. When it's when you got really low water, it seems like smaller works better and matches their environment more. Seems like... Water gets big, you can kind of give them a target, and it's not always the answer. A lot of times that smaller stuff works better, but, like, say I'm fishing, like, I don't know, I might go from a 5-inch fly to a 3-inch fly, and sometimes you'll see the difference, you know. It could be the same pattern, just, and I, I've seen that, you know, bright, sunny day with low, clear water, definitely go smaller. Um, time of year, typically, fish want to eat bigger baits in colder water. Because they're going to move less. They want a bigger meal. Um, right. If they're going to burn the energy, it has to be worth they it, want, right? I mean, you know, it, they need the calories. Uh, fishing pressure changes that. You know, if everybody's throwing eight-inch flies out there, they get stung once, they ain't going to eat that again. You know, I mean, that's just how it is. So, you know, it's it's kind of, you know, as people, we change what should be, I think seems like i would agree with that alex you know yeah we've seen a, a big shift especially here because we've been fishing streamers for so long and it, you know bigger 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 yeah it got bigger in a hurry there and it got bigger yeah. and it's like how big can you throw and then and it, then it's like man all of a sudden i started hitting fish on like the old small stuff yep. again you know like a mm-hmm. jj bugger like yeah. you know like old traditional stuff that you're like oh, that they, they caught fish on for, for a, a million years. well and right. even if you look back at like the old gallop and Lensman flies, they were all like two and three inches, the majority of them. And yeah. when did Look they have the good fishing? Look at the zoo cougar, like the yep. bow bugger. Like and his... when did they have good fishing? Right. September, when water's typically low and clear. Yep. You know, I know Kelly used to do good in August on the manistee. It's low and clear, you know, so you're matching that same size fly to the water. You know, when I saw that change was like when we first started fishing circus peanuts, but that was usually like in April. April, because you were you were trying to match the yeah you know, higher water, higher water, and, and it was higher water, and you start going, oh, that's and you're different. Like, oh, that's the chestnut lamprey, yeah, or you right. know whatever. And then you so then you think, well, this four inch all the time. Well, not necessarily. Maybe you know, and it also depends on your river. Like, you go to Hoden Pile, three to four inches is tiny. 
Tiny. you go to hole in the wall. Three to four inches is big, you know, exactly. so that's a big thing, you know, like I carry, essentially I've got four fly boxes I kind of rotate through. One's got, you know, like five to eight inch, whatever. The other one's more like, you know, fours, maybe five. Then one that's like, you know, three, three and a half. And then I got one that's all like single hook, size twos, one zoo cougars, black ghost, sparkle minnow, whatever, all mm-hmm. that stuff. And that's like the one box you need July and August. Absolutely. Like, you know, you're basically like, yeah, we'll do this. No, that's not saying if, I mean, if I go to Hoden Pile, well, that's usually small mouth anyway, but you know, now I'm at three and four. So you just kind of gauge based on where you're fishing. Okay. Some of it feels too small in some bigger water. So you kind of eradicate that box. Like my one to three inch stuff, one to two inch stuff in the white, and you just uh, don't ever run it really. So you know what I, uh, one of the things I do, and you probably do this too, is I'll run two flies. If I have anglers that can do it, I'll run a big one thinking like, okay, well maybe I'm, you know, giving them a target and then I'll run something pretty natural and realistic. Sometimes I'll go really small, like a size ten. Yeah, I know. for that back fly, and it's amazing how many eat how that. many big fish eat that little, you know, tiny. Just it looks tiny. like a black. I mean, it's tiny. It's like wow, yep. they saw that big target, mm-hmm. and which I drew mean, it's them. Tiny. And they saw like, the steak. They took the jelly bean. It's right? like I a mean, size just twelve. The, yeah. yeah, like the it's bittiest, bittiest stuff. You can the, see those. I'm just Some with my readers. Come <laughs> but I mean, you know, that's one of the things, and then. You know, with yeah. the clear water, did you do anything differently with your your like line change ups? Like, well, I the... always do like uh, I don't like sink tips really when the water gets low and clear because I don't like the impact on the water. Right. So, so you're I'm switching the internet, more, like, intermediate, intermediate lines. type stuff. Yeah, like I've been I've been running like a you know Rio discontinued it, but the fifteen foot type threes. Those were nice. Yep, because yeah. they land super soft. They do not make any noise when they land. Nope. And that's kind of what I I think that's a big thing. I think that would be a great permit line. Yeah, yeah, I can <laughs> you know, see like that. It's like, whoa. yep, and that and you or know and they never line. made them in a nine weight, so that kind of limits their application in Arkansas because eh, you don't have to have a nine, but a lot of times it's nice too. So I was actually scouring eBay the other day to buy more. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't pay retail, <laughs> but I'm like, oh, oh well. Get some bundled musky so, baits there, you know, too? Or? Yeah. What I did, Alex, is yeah. I took Well, no, those. I usually know the people I get those from. Yeah. At this point, <laughs> I would expect. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking, like, my outbound shorts. Yeah. Or, like, a Titan taper, and then I was putting those intermediate tips off of those. Yeah, oh, like a poly yep, 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 yeah. yep. Those poly yep, yep, really yep. made a nice... I think it does that yep. nicely without having to buy an extra line. Yep, that would make sense. And it was... Yeah. It, yeah, well, I've got some of those big line personal. like that will have no trouble throwing a poly. I mean, yeah. and I did it for smallmouth, and then I'm like, time, I like seven and a half feet. That's fine. Yeah, yep. I'm like, I can do this for trout. Yeah. So it worked out really well. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we did have a question uh, from Pete. Was curious if there's anywhere he can buy your flies. Hmm, <laughs> not, nothing. I'm really fishing right now. What yeah. uh, what production level is is the is the cave at right now? <laughs> oh, <zero. Alex. laughs> zero. Necessity out of necessity. Um, yeah, that's about it. It's like, oh god, I need a couple. I did tie. I think I went two days in a row tying two flies each day, so I thought that was pretty good. It's pretty good. Should be done till I go to Arkansas now. <laughs> I got hooks to sharpen. I've got some lures coming in the mail. <laughs> Well, <laughs> got to be ready for some, next June. I know Catch does produce some of yep. your patterns. Yep, they've got a few of and them. And so first carry. check your local fly shop, and yep. then, um, yep. you know, I don't know that Catch has a database of their dealers, but I know, you know, we try and carry some. We yep. do carry um, those. Yep. And sometimes you just got to call You got to make some phone calls. I think that's <laughs> – you, you guys sit down, use lazy. the phone book or whatever about, they use like, now. I wouldn't mind getting these with somebody, but it's just one of those things, and I just, I don't know. I don't really care. One of those things. This is a good time about. for you to maybe mention your website, though. Oh, well, which I, I, I don't so know. So somebody I'm, can call? What are you talking about? <laughs> I imagine you have, like, the bat phone in the basement. Like, it's yeah, red, right. it lights the up. straight to voicemail all the time. <laughs> <laughs> ah, run, run! Don't answer that. Call, call, call for June. Yeah, don't call for June. June's June's all tied up. 
Call Donnie. Oh. Donnie Richards. I hear he's great. Call the guys at North Anglia. I'm busy. <laughs> I hear Russ really likes working in jail. Yeah. Russ <laughs> loves taking new clients, right? Yeah, he yeah. loves taking especially <laughs> Night Hatch. Oh, man, he's great at it. <laughs> he's so patient. He's so patient. He loves it. <laughs> Probably more patient than oh, I am right oh now. Plus, you get to hear about the Russians. So. <laughs> yeah, and the Russians. No, uh, but, yeah, my yeah. website's um, alflyfishing.com, and that, you know, there's just some base. It's a brochure on the on the web is all it really is. But I'm always open for emails and phone calls. There's a few guys who reach out pretty regular, and I can I usually try to coach them through or help them out, whatever, whenever I can. Um. Yeah, and I have no problem doing that. So feel free to shoot an email. It's just alex at alflyfishing.com. If you um, just Google Alex Lafkus, something your website's gonna, something weird might come up, but his website's in there, I promise. So. It's in there. <laughs> Somewhere. Maybe. If you haven't seen some of the fish Alex has, Alex has been able to find, his Instagram is worth checking it's, out, too. It's, it's the same, A-L fly fishing or something, A-L something. Yeah, something like, yeah. I think Search that's Alex Lafkus. Yeah. If you can use the search bar, you can find him. So we have another question for you here, Alex. Uh-oh. What's your leader setup? Oh, from your super fan. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, I've been running, so to like eights and nines, I'm starting to cut it back a little bit, but I'm doing 40, 30, 25, 20, and like a foot of each. And I'm using Maxima Chameleon because – Well, and this is also on bigger rivers where I, like, need, like, turnover and something might actually matter, you know. So, like, even in my or Hoden pile, I like to have that. And I like to have that really stiff butt section to help propel that bigger fly. A lot of times I'm just going to barrel swivel from that down to 16-pound carbon, 14-pound carbon, whatever. Because that's where it's going to break. Fine. Doesn't matter. Life is easier with that. Um, And then I can go kind of thicker to thin. I would say, like... Six, maybe seven feet, you know. Oh, wow. but it's that's a little bit big... longer than I think. Yeah, yeah, that's more yeah. than I expected. On bigger rivers, you know, I don't mind having I mean, is this it. the well, White River the distance to leader? Lands, what's that? Is this the White River River or leader, or Mayo, is this my Okay. Yeah, it just seems bigger to turn over. Holden Pile, and whatnot, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, seems to turn over and better. You know, like when I'm up on the Little River, I mean, a lot of times I'm just looping a butt section of 16 especially on like one of those intermediate lines or a type three tip like you know now it's not landing super hard so it's kind of just it'll flow better but they do turn over better if you do taper it a little bit Mm -hmm. when you're throwing just something small like that some 12 pound carbon on the tip of a six weight intermediate line is ample for what i'm doing but i don't get too bent out of shape about it some people get really you know they care more i guess oh it's a science it's (laughs) I know. I don't. I mean, it's like just keep it easy, easy. Well, and I have eight million miles of Maxima at home, so I'm like, oh, take some of this and some of you know, I have three thousand yards of fifty, forty, and thirty. I'm like, gonna have to use it someday. So now it's liters. Yeah, that. But don't don't get too caught up in it. If you can switch it, like one thing I will say, like there was a leader today that was like kind of seemed long and it wasn't turnover and it was like three sections of material that just wasn't turning over good and i think if you shorten up those sections a little bit more it's going to turn over better you know like you'll feel it you'll see it when if it's dying on your cast now if you can't cast you might not notice it as quick but (laughs) we can all practice casting in lawns we can do that this is easy what really yeah there's this nice park by my house and if I'm going to go saltwater fishing it's and it's freezing and it's March 28th and I'm out here, I go out there and practice. I do the same thing, Alex. And, you know, people are like, <laughs> I know you they're go like, practice. Well, I'm going to spend all this money no, on a I trip. I just watch I like cast. 100 YouTube videos and I don't practice. So the we funny find. thing is, you know, so years ago, Kidding. Bruce Richards like sat me down and he's like, you know, Brian, you could be something in this industry maybe if you learn how to cast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was devastated, right? Yeah. I was like, you're the worst caster I've ever seen. Oh, oh, and no, it truly, uh, I mean, th- but he worked with me on my cast, and yeah. I'd take him fishing, and, and we'd work on casting. He said, if you practice five minutes a day. Yeah. That's all it takes. It really is all it takes because the cast is only everything. And if you can't make the cast, Don't go. you're screwed. Yep. And so I tell people all the time, like, oh, I'm going to, you know, wherever. I'm like, you should practice casting. I should? Yeah. Like, you're going to pay $5,000 for a trip. 
And if you can't make the cast, you're not going to catch the fish. You're going to invest your money, but you're not going to invest your time. Right. Come on. So, like, uh, and and so people can get this, you know. It's like, hey, are you going to go play Pebble Beach and not go hit the driving range before you go? You're going to embarrass yourself on that course? That's essentially what you're doing if you could take Mm. a trip of a lifetime to go chase tarpon permit especially that fish, salt water, salt water stuff, stuff like holy crap if you can't make the cast you're jaded on these rivers you're done because the current helps your ca- you know like it's going to help straighten it out a little bit of slack here and there is fine whatever the second you go into a still water situation and you have to dial something right in between its eyes and you go with a curve in there or a hook forget it quit reel it up you're done missed it right you know, it's just what it is. So you work on getting a good, clean double haul. You work on keeping your thumb behind the rod through the entire cast. And you actually work on doing it. See, what happens around here, it seems like people are more, oh, you know, you get in a boat and they're just like, ah, flip it out there, I'll do the rest. Well, that's fine doing this. You flip it down the middle of the river and catch fish all day. But it doesn't, you don't get taught how to cast and then add slack. You get taught how to flop it out there. You know, versus like, no, learn how to cast first. Tight line, tight line, tight line, straight. Everything straight, everything straight, everything straight. Okay, now add slack. Yeah. Now add slack. Now, you know, so it's like you kind of try to reverse engineer it, but once you try to do that, it's just over. No, I, I think that that is always the biggest problem. I mean, and don't go out there with a sink tip and heave it around. That doesn't do you any good on a lawn. You get an eight weight floating line, put it on your eight weight, and you try to throw something with a deer hair head. Mm-hmm. Get some hula you know, hoops and cut the hook off it. Yep. Practice with a deer hair head in the wind, because the second you can make that go in a straight line in the wind, you're going to pick up a sick tip and it's going to go wherever you want it, whenever you want it. Be a lot easier. Yeah, that's a really good yeah. point, Alex. Yeah, it's yeah. like you just do it. Force yourself. It's so much easier. Like, and I'll go out when I was practicing when I did the saltwater thing. Um, I'd go out there and throw out like metal plate. You know, my guide lunch plates I used to use. That <laughs> now I don't. I'm like, here, you want a sandwich or not? Um, and I throw like the metal plates out and like scatter them around a baseball diamond out in the outfield and I'd get comfortable making a cast and then I'd change my location and it didn't matter which way the wind is coming. Cause you've got to learn how to do it. You know, if you're saltwater fishing and that shot comes up, it wind ain't going to be at your back. It's usually going to be doing something weird or coming at you. Like it doesn't matter. You practice every hard angle or everything you think is going to be hard because you can do it. It just takes a little practice. Um, yeah, please just practice. That is, uh, that's probably, that's one of the more frustrating things as a guide is to get in the boat and people get all excited to fish and catch fish and want to catch fish. And then they can't cast and can't fish. And it's like, wait a minute, I can deal with missing fish and not learning how to do a strip set because that takes a lot of bites and that's not something you can, right. It's not something you can easily you know, that's right. Replicate on a lawn or any, yeah. right. And one thing I did want to talk about because I've actually this is a video I've wanted to do that I haven't because well, been lazy. <laughs> I got a motorboat. Really <laughs> you got a boat, <laughs> and we've had mild winters. Motorboat goes away tomorrow. Times, so what would I be doing in the motorboat? <laughs> um, when people cast sink tips, people always kind of struggle. And and what it usually is, they're like false cast, false cast, get line out. I think. One thing that people should really work on when they do that is like the first step for me is I work the fly to the surface with my leader out. So you're not going to get hung on the nap, but like I go up into my cast, I'm slipping line out of my left hand. People have a tendency. They want to pinch it to go. And it's like, no, you know, no. start here. Let some line slip out of your left hand. Then you can shoot a little in your back cast. And now you're going because it gets that head out quicker. And you can really do it with anything. But I notice it the most with sink tips, because people kind of like, they work it all in close, and then they can't get it in and out quick. It's like stuck on a knot or whatever. And meanwhile, you're zipping by the best spot in the river, and it's like, all right. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so it's like, you let a little line slip out of your left, throw a little into your back cast. Now you got 15 to 20 feet out. Bam, bam, whole fly line's gone. Right, you're not shooting that one giant chunk at the you're end. Not trying Instead, to, you're just, not doing it with 10 feet. Now you got the head almost all the way out there. Right. Now it's going. You've got 10 feet out here. 20, 30, whole thing gone. Um, it, you know, a lot of guys have gotten with the fat of those short, fat heads, you know, because it loads it quicker. I, I can't. I, I don't like them. Um, a lot of it is I don't like them because... One, impact on water, and two, I hate fighting fishing current with that big, thick runner. 
you, it's like you just don't have contact. You don't have control. You get that big belly, and it uh, just kind of seems messy to me. So I like, hmm. you know, I like those Rio striper lines. That's still the same tip I've been running. Like, uh, those things work great. I get people using them, and they're like, oh, you know. Um, it's like a casting line. You can cast that thing. Um, and so that's the line I run because it is a little bit narrower, but it doesn't allow you just to kind of heave. So you got to learn how to cast, but you should learn how to cast anyway. You really the cast is only everything. <laughs> it's only everything. It's such a good way to put that it. That is. is so. It's only everything. Yeah. Because you, you I mean, can't do anything. You, right? can't, you do can't do anything, anything. Practice without that. The yeah. Yeah. And, like, work on it. Like, and, like, it's not that, like, no. it kills me because it's not uh, tough. No, right? I mean, time. like, it takes time. It, and it takes feel. But once you feel it, yeah. you've got it. And now it's about, you know, I was fishing with a buddy down in Arkansas last year, and I just was, like, dialing it in. You know, ding, 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 ding. Well, the only reason I can dial it in is because I know how to cast, and I also know, oh, here's a tree limb. Well, I'm not going to be able to hit it going that way. So, But with a low backhand, which same cast, different plane, bam, up hook right up straight up into the pocket. You know, people are just doing this all day, got to wait, and you get by the tree, and then they're kind of like this. You know, and you, you learn how to, you know, the backhand's important. Like, I know people who don't do the backhand because, oh, it hurts this or that, whatever. Well, whatever. I mean, you got to learn how to do it. You can put yourself into position. If you learn how to cast, you can change your angle and always get that fly shuffled into the spot. Yeah, you don't want to go low over the middle of the boat. So you go low in front of the boat before you get there. You keep that loop tight, and you're shooting it up underneath trees and getting it where other people can't. And that's going to pay. I mean, it, just, it, pay, it pays off big, big time. time. Big, big time. time. You know, like if you see how these cedars grow in Michigan, like basically anytime you have a cedar coming out of a bank overhanging, there's a deep hole underneath there. It's how the root systems grow, whatever it is, there's a deep pocket in there. Well, you can't get it up under. Well, you got to learn how to get it up underneath there. They shoot lines up underneath mangroves in Florida. Absolutely. You know, pinch the loop, take it to three quarters, and, phew, and scoot it in there. Just how it is. And it's more fun when you can do that. Oh, it's a lot it is of fun. more fun. It's like throwing darts. It's like target practice. That's what I always felt when I used to go down to the PM and do, like, hopper stuff just for fun. It was always like, if I can get a cast in there, I'll get bit. Because you're finding, like, overhanging limb, tree, oh, back in that bubble line down against there, oh, I'll get bit. Yeah, it might be six inches, might be 16, but there's always a fish there because nobody else can hit that spot. And a lot of times it isn't when you're right here. It's when you're 50 feet away. That's right. the only spot you got the back cast up the river, then you've got the angle there. So it's like, no, why do you got to throw 40? Well, easy, because now I can get it there. And it's not just a 20-foot cast, 20-foot cast, 20-foot cast. Now, if you're looking at that, you're too late. Those good fish already know you're there. So it's looking 50-foot and going, oh, here, watch this. Little double haul, zip it right in there. And that's fun. It is fun. It is fun. I don't do it much anymore, but it's fun. We should get out and do that next summer. I should, but I probably won't. <laughs> We'll probably go mindlessly troll and catch nothing <laughs> instead. Because <laughs> I like the punishment. You've um, had some big fish encounters out there on the troll. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fish, a lot of activity this year on the casting. Did a lot of that this year. Saw a lot. Those big ones are hard to catch casting. They don't like to bite yeah. casting too much. Uh-oh. We must have. I think we're missing some uh, questions here. Uh-oh. That's okay. So Must. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, Alex, when you're guiding, what do you do when your client just doesn't listen to you? This was from Nathan Anthony. <laughs> just hold Turn on. my head and look at the birds. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, try, to bald to, eagle. try to get to the takeout as quick as possible. <laughs> They get shorter. Fortunately, I'm in a position where the majority of the people I take, I know. So I don't have some of the issues I used to have. That's what will burn you out and drive you crazy about guiding. A lot of the guys, I know their ability and what they can do and what they can't do. And you just run with it. It's fine. You I think that's the key is be as fast as possible figuring out yeah, what, what people can, can do, and do and then just fish to their ability. Don't call ask them to do audible on the water. Do. No, because it's. Don't they're take gonna, them to something because they they're going to be frustrated. Take You're going to be frustrated. Them catch one on a dry. Yeah. Uh, uh, you get in a riffle. Yeah, watch that thing. Let's run it down here. You know. I mean, I got. You know, I got guys who are 65, 70 years old. You know, and it's like, look, they're only going to be able to do so fast, so many casts. So let's maximize our opportunity. Most of them are done in five, six hours. That's kind of the way they fish. I got other guys who will. <laughs> I get exhausted watching them fish. John Walnut. 
if you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> I have guys I that I'm so just like, how do you fish you that hard for know, so long? I, I could do that for about two hours at the I know, most. And I'm like, oh, God, that's not working. Where's the takeout? <laughs> no, it's, and I think it's great. And they got the passion and the desire, and they're still going hard at it, and I think that's great. I, uh, you know, I just, I watch it, and I'm like, whoa, you got to be kidding me. Um, <laughs> it's impressive. But I'm so taking you, Motrin just to keep up with their shoulder at this yeah, point, right? Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm just oh like, God, they're going to hurt. Oh, I cast about half what other people do because I'm like, oh, I can't cast like that anymore. Ruin the shoulder. You know, it's like, well, well I think sudden, you and I talked about this this yeah, summer. Like, it's you like, slow it down and start casting right, and you're like, okay, well, I can't do it as fast, but I can still just, like, here it is. Bam. Right. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm going to miss that spot. Oh, well, you know, that spot. You, well, you start to pick your targets. Yeah, yeah. Because you can make the cast. Yep. So it's not just. Why Ryan would Prey. I throw it, you know, say this time of year, why would I throw it up there on that rocky gravel flat when I have the deep back eddy there? Right. It's I'm like, just going to, I'm going to look ahead. I'm going to look ahead of the boat. I'm going to pick my target. Shot. Make I've a plan. One there five years ago, Execute. I'll try that. Yep. yep. Never yep. seen one up there, but five years ago one was there. <laughs> yeah, that kind of happens. Um, But it's good. It's fun. And that's what, you, I think most people just have to get to that point, you know, where it's like, whoa, settle down, take your time, find your shot. Make sure you're li- like, and that's the other thing is people don't really pay attention to like the little things. They're like, I'm like, oh, you got five. And they just say, all right. I'm like, when I got five, I'm like, okay, is there not stack the line right? Make sure that's good. You know, I take five to like look over everything, know everything's stacked right if it's in a ball or, you know, the first line going out on top. You know, you learn that saltwater stuff where it's like, you know, my guy down there used to be like, get, you know, like you heard the motor start sidling down. Why aren't you stripping line out? Because he wants you to strip it in so that the first line going out is what's sitting on top. You yep. know, it's simple things like that. You get ready. Do the same thing in Arkansas when I'm fishing. You know, I know we're coming into the good run. And if I'm actually fishing, which I never am, but um, I'll make sure I'm getting everything ready. Boom, boom. That's set here. This is set here. I can fish like this. Feet are clear. Okay, let's go. And you just... Like, I see people have stuff in the front of the bow with them. And so I'm like, oh, my God. Like, even a lighter on the stripping table, I'm like, oh, my God. I'm I'd taking their water mind. bottles off. Oh, yeah, I'm water like, bottles nope. go on the side holder thing. Like, yeah, and just nothing. Right. Guys have beer cans. I'm like, oh, yeah, you'll bust your knuckle open on that. Broken beer can. You know, I've seen that. <laughs> Blood everywhere. I'm like, oh, there you go. Whatever. Oh, I was tying a fly, wasn't I? Yeah, let's get back to tying. Oh, God. we should do that. <laughs> That'd be good. What are we doing? Oh, what are we doing? Oh, yeah. We're sharpening Time flies. Hooks, right? Sharpening hooks. So you're cutting some bucktail here. It looks like the lower kind of no, half. It's just what I have left. <laughs> Is that a good answer? Yeah. That's a great answer. That's, that's what I have. It doesn't look very good. It's Looks honest. Like that's okay. Check the pegboard over there for some more white bucktail. And we're going to take a huge chunk. And the reason I take a huge chunk, probably more on these little flies, is because I need more tips to fill the body out. So you end up using a little bit more to get, you know, just the same amount. Whatever. That's cheap. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And I always kind of stack the tips in my hands just to kind of keep it clean and try to use as much as I can. Now, do you put an eye on this or anything? Or yeah. gonna... No. No. No, I Don't had, ask uh, Alex about eyes. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> no, that was a baited question. I right. spent 35 minutes. We have a eyes giant. On my fly. No one can see it, but there's just like three pages of baited quest, bait questions Good. here for Alex. Good. <laughs> I like. It. We know we'll bite hard. Yeah. No, I. You know, the eye thing is, I think, a little overkill. But whatever. Whatever. Um. Well, you spend 30 minutes getting your eyes set, and then they fall off in 10 casts. I mean, what's the matter? What does that matter? I don't need that. Who needs that in their life? Glue everywhere. Nonsense. Oh, wait. You guys own a fly shop, don't you? (laughs) (laughs) Never mind. Gotta have eyes. I don't know. So I'll never catch a fish. You gotta get eyes for it. Yeah, like I put those fish skulls on stuff, and I don't even put the eyes in it. And there's a recessed spot for them, and it comes with eyes. And I'm still like, man, that's pretty lazy. Alex. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that's good. Isn't it? <laughs> oh I, yeah, yeah. I'll admit, I just I'd use a sharpie in those recesses if I if I'm not feeling lazy. I'll just sharpie a really? dark spot there. And I don't do anything. No, see, I'm a big eye guy. I think that's a, like a, a target trigger. A trigger. Trigger. Well, uh, some people believe. Yeah. I just haven't done it for so long. I still don't. I'm just like whatever. Who cares? 
Rangers. I'm I'm a Ranger. I don't care. Yeah, that's what makes that's it thick. awesome. That's going to be thick. That should cover up some of that body. Is that all we want it? Yeah, see, I'm just trying to t- kind of taper it so that the you know, the bucktail's kind of going to end up kind of in line with the cutback on the fetters. And I'll trim it. And then after I trim it, I usually try to go back in and pull out some of the shorter tips, too, and just make it a little less bulky. Tie fly. Tie fry. And then I'm going to do kind of like a pinch wrap here. So you kind of pinch the thread and try to wrap your fingers up. Oh, I'm losing it, though, so that's not going to work great. I'll get a couple loose wraps on it, and then that's when I kind of start spinning the bucktail. Have you played with the faux bucktail on these at all? I have not. I understand it's pretty slick. It is. I and in my experience it, it it's gonna require a lot more a lot more work to do a reverse tie. Yes. You know, you're a lot really glue. lashing and then you <laughs> a lot really more glue. I mean, yeah. I would guess. That's kind of what I've seen. I, I like natural bucktail. I just I like But I know too. but I've tied so long with it and so much of it, like it's not the easiest you know, it's it can be kind of a pain to deal with when you start. Like you're like, oh god, this is junk. But you just got to spend time with it, and you'll get comfortable using it. It's that's how all materials are. It's spinning hair, doing everything is it all takes a little bit of time. And then I can't find my cheap two dollar hair packer thing. So instead, I have this fancy thing. Ooh, that is really fancy. Yeah, is that custom? Nice. custom yeah, these guys were making them. What's that know. carved out of? Wood. It's wood. It wow. looks fancier than that. How would I know? Come on. Wow, that's beautiful. It is. It's quite It looks fancy. like something else. I'm just going to say that before. It's not. I can't even do that anymore. I don't have any of that stuff. I gave it all away. Everybody was thinking it. But... I gave it all away, man. Well, everybody got treasures at their house. Like, oh, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, sweet. What do I have? Oh, I have a hair packer now. Great fun. <laughs> awesome. I love getting old. It's awesome. So cool. Maybe I'll live to be 100 now. And we start our triangle of bucktail to get it to kind of flare and stand out. And this really is like, I've heard from a few guys that have been running that bug I tied last year too. And they, they like the fact that it was durable, number one. And two, like the brushes make life easy and all that stuff, but it's a durable fly. And tying this bucktail this way is just, it just lasts. And you help keep that profile longer. How are we looking at? Getting her dialed in? Oh, you put the facial one on. The what? The facial. (laughs) I'm going to have to put a warning. (laughs) Yeah, you should. Oh, we can really, we can really get creative. Yeah, there we go. And you just kind of got to keep building that triangle. Like, you build that cone up to kind of hold it so it just easily kind of papers it back. And there you're kind of getting that profile right there. A little bit more, but you always kind of want to keep building that thread back just so it allows it to, so the thread doesn't slide down. See, and I put, I left quite a bit ahead there, but that's good because I can throw some crafter in there if I need. I really don't probably need to with the amount of buck hair I got on there, but whatever. Whatever makes you guys happy. The crafter is nice, too, because then at least if you want to mix up colors, you can do that. Typically, I would, if I was going to do olive and white, I would do olive tails. It seems like I always do that. The darker the color on it, other than chartreuse and white, I always do white tails. Um, do you ever mix the two uh, colors here? When you're, like, would you do an olive and white? I would, but I would have put olive tails back here. And I wasn't thinking last night. So all I brought was, oh, you know what? I may have brought some olive. I don't know. I We've olive. derailed him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, I did. Look at that. Oh, I got some olive stuff. Oh, well, maybe. Maybe we'll tie another one. Um, Yeah, I would. I could actually do it with shorter tails, too, to keep that size down. You really don't need much down there. We can tie a quick one after this one, Alice. Oh, we can. Tie. We won't get distracted with a bunch of shop talk. No, probably not. So you're working on the taper here. What's your, I mean, what's your 
Do you I'm have just, a point you're working towards I'm to, just to have those at tips like, mixed up? See how up? those tail feathers are kind of like that's their wide spot? Yeah. Kind of ending it there. That's exactly the question. It looks question really well it. proportioned. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, it's, it looks all right. Yeah, yeah. I tie a lot. I've tied a lot of these type things, so it's, I kind of get it now. Two a night. <laughs> Sometimes two a month, man. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> Me too. It's been a slow mail week. Packages, <laughs> my treasures don't come till this week. I'll be pretty tied up the next few nights. <laughs> Got plenty of hooks to sharpen. Come over. I'll teach you how. I file. might have to come do that. Teach I you might. how to use the flat file Ooh. for the cover. Get the tip of the point going out so it's really grabby. Mm. Teach you all sorts of good stuff. So, yeah, we could throw, I got room, so we could throw a little craft around here. Dee, dee, dee. You don't need much. I mean, I guess it gives it a little bit more life out there, but the way these flies kind of pivot on their sides, it's, you don't really need much. I mean, they, they get a good swim action, and they work... You know, like when you tie them big, they work good for pike and muskie and stuff because they, well, muskie, I wouldn't know. I don't do that crap. But pike, because they'll do the same pivot in dead water. So like smallmouth, they small work mouth, good for Smallmouth, they too. love like that. You, that. And pause. you can throw it in the lakiest dead water, like I'm fishing lake. So I throw it in that lake and it, do, do, bam, to the side and it's, they choke it. Um, That's what you lose with a lot of other flies, you know, like. Some of them, if you tie, you know, like the old flat bucktails we used to tie, like other than Sadati's works phenomenal, but it's on a couple hooks that I don't catch trout on. They just don't grab trout good. Um, but you you really, like, every once in a while you get one that wants to turn and pivot right. You know, a lot of them don't do that. So it's like you can tie a bunch and it's like, eh, psh, garbage, garbage. Well, they can go in your pike box because pike don't care. But in a lake, now it's like, psh, and you get that 90 turn sometimes that's just pike you do that in front of a pike and, and even muskies like you know i've spent enough time with eric down there like and he doesn't really care if that fly darts to the same side every time but it has to turn sideways it, it like that's the reason they don't use game changers in lakes with any success the only time you get them to eat is on a two-hand burn because it just it doesn't like that because when a fit when it Predator sees that broad side of the prey, that's when they go. And that's really, really a musky thing. Like, you know, While you're trimming that, we did have a, a question yes. regarding hook sharpening, actually. Oh. If you sharpen new out of the package or just once they're doled up? You know, usually with a lot of these hooks, no. With my musky hooks, I do. Um, but that's trolling stuff. And and I will, like, if I get those big spinnerbait hooks, I might touch them up a little bit. These are pretty fine. Like... You know, yeah, the fly your, hooks I've found are, yeah, are pretty good, but pretty... I know exactly what you mean with the big spinnerbait hooks. Yep. Yeah. yeah I'll you touch just, those up. It could be just a little a little bit more grabby. You like shave off some of that plating sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes the the black nickel ones, like you got to take a little bit off. What I found, I think that Tiemco ceramic sharpener works better on black nickel. I ordered a bunch of those after you came in this summer. I ordered two. gave me... A little bit of a hard time, just as I could give you more. I believe <laughs> no, but it, it's a good little hook sharpener. That, that little Tiamco one works good. Um, and I've got some flat files. Usually, these ones I haven't had much of an issue with. I check them, you know, I went through some partridges at one point that were just, I mean, dull as could be, really. Yeah, and I was like, well, that's not gonna work. And I had to go through and sharpen all those. They were the, I don't know, they were some partridge ones, attitude. Attitude something. extra or whatever. No, they were or the, the extra, or the heavier ones, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, it was the lighter attitude X or whatever. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And they were like, I was like, oh man, I couldn't stab this into anything. Stab it into a banana. <laughs> so those got a little bit of love on them. Th these B10s's I haven't had an issue with. Um, no, Gamagatsu's been just consistent for yeah, us. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Seems like those A-Rex have been pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yeah, okay. that's I haven't. I haven't had anyone come in and have any issues with the A-Rex yeah. at all. So, yeah, I think. Have they, you played well, with any of the light, the the trout predator lights? Yeah. Uh, no, I haven't. But I think that's the one. I think I'm gonna. I think what I'm using instead is that round bend worm hook right now. Okay. And I just happen to have a lot of those. Yeah. But I think it's a very similar hook. I think it's the same J yep. hook. You know, the old traditional long line 
swordfish killer. That was old standard J-hook model. That's what Andres told me. He's like, oh, yeah. You like that style hook? I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah, that's what got banned on long lines because it killed everything that ate it. I'm like, no wonder. Wow. <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next day you buy like a thousand of them, right? Wow, I'm going to eat more of those. <laughs> what if they ban those for trout? <laughs> Only outlaws will have them. Oh, man. It would be good. Catch them all then. Well, maybe not. But that, I mean, that hook, like... I told I showed people that hook because I like when I started running it I was like I think I'm hooking more and I gave it to some buddies who fish a lot and they're like yeah you were because I know I am now too so and that's what it is it's that wider gap lighter wire that just it's grabby these are grabby too though these small B10s's are grabby man these, I like the small ones I do too they just like usually I'd be against that hook point coming back in but for some reason it finds a home on those things. I've hung some fish, you know, some nice ones off that back little one. And even some of the musky guys, um, like I know Willen had some flies tied on those big B10Ss, and, like, he stuck some fish and hung them on them. So, whatever. I mean, what does Willen know? But, <laughs> <laughs> really, he's my friend. I don't have many of those. Should probably be nicer to the five I have, shouldn't I? <laughs> 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 they wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> so what's your process here, Alex, with the the craft? Are you just you're not spooning it? You're just slowly adding a little maybe yeah, hemispheres, like top, and top and bottom. And bottom okay, top and bottom. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, I don't keep up on the newest trends on how to do this stuff. No crazy dubbing loops or anything like that. Or... I'm with Alex. I figured I, I could just sell you loops. another another brush, a craft for a brush. You know, you could. It's... Yeah, you could. Yeah, I've got them at home, and I still use this. I don't know. It seems like you got to, it just takes a little bit more. This, I mean, those are, you, it seems like you need multiple wraps, four or five wraps to get what I can get out of two little chunks tied in. Cause I just sure. want a little bit of flare there. And then I'm going to do the stupid standard flash blend bait fish brush head and it's done. Once again, easy. Remember? That's what we want. Easy. I'm lazy, man. I don't <laughs> care anymore. Very lazy. <laughs> I like to troll. I'm You're, like troll. <laughs> troll. You're like the dude. Troll. You're like the dude. I'm a troll. I'm a troll. He's, really he's the dude, man. but maybe I don't know the opposite. Troll. He might be the opposite now. Me? Yeah. Of the dude. Oh, God. The big Lebowski dude. Like he God, could be the I'm laziest lazy. man. I'm very lazy. Like the client I had. Can you imagine if he I came in and like a like a robe, that like <laughs> slippers, yeah. carrying a bowling ball bag? Well, I, this is pretty much. I'm gonna get you. I, I'm kind of oh, that'd in be that a outfit. hilarious fly time bag, a bowl. <laughs> I'm oh. kind of in that outfit, guys. I'm kind of in like, I have a couple pairs of these pants and a bunch of sweatpants. Yeah. They're like kind of like <laughs> it's one else. It's, it's loungewear. Like, it's yeah, loungewear. Kind of what I wear. I was very disappointed when Sims discontinued these pants because I'm like I'm wearing through them and I'm like I need four more pairs. <laughs> I have a pair of those pants and mine are like holes. Oh, I got holes everywhere. I mean, it's like my wife looks at me. And she's like, "You're not wearing those." Out You're not you? going to the grocery I'm like, in those I got sweatpants <laughs> underneath. She's like, "Oh God." <laughs> God, you got Amen, lucky. brother. I'm like, God, you got lucky when you married me, didn't you? She was like, oh, boy. She thanks her lucky stars every oh, day, man, Alex. she got so lucky. Yeah. She's like, oh, God, it's too late now. <laughs> She's like, what is this going to cost me to divorce him? No, too much. <laughs> Never mind. Is it worth it? No, don't, don't give her that idea. <laughs> I, I tell her that all the time. I'm like, well, one of these days I'm pretty sure I'm going to come up and all my shit's going to be on the curb. And she's like, no, come on. I'm not leaving. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Go on another musky adventure for a month this time. You get a Dear Alex letter. Dear Alex. Dear Alex. <laughs> I sold everything you own for $12. No, she knows who to go to. I told her who knows what's worth what. I'm like, well, you got to get with Zagorski on musky stuff and Greenberg on fish and stuff. On flowers. <laughs> It'll be fine. The Zagorski won't lowball you. Don't go to Willen. He'll steal half that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then the bait fish brush. I love these things. Those things are awesome. You know, they're just so stiff and so easy to use. And I trim them down. Like, you don't need... You know, you can overdo what, what it. What length this. are you starting with this there? This is with an inch. Okay. And I'm trimming it down almost halfway. So I'm getting kind of a lot of the finer tip point stuff out. So it 
you don't need much. The, a little bit goes a long way. Three wraps is uh, that's plenty. Because you don't have much behind it. You know? Right. I totally get where you're coming from. Yeah, it's like it just you, you can overdo it with these, and they do donuts out there. We don't need that. And sometimes, like I've started, I don't know. I mix it up all the time. I'm not sure which ones swim better, the one with the little kicker shank off the back, or just the two hook ones, like I was doing last year. I don't think it matters. I think they both look really good. So I've been going with a lot more single hook stuff this year. Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing small double hooks because I do like the double hook stuff. But I've been going small. Like, I was tying. Well, and, like, you know, what I've really tried to get away from is using, like, the old 93, 95s and stuff like that because that gauge just doesn't seem to grab them. So I've been doing more, like, of the stuff I used to do on a 93, 95 on, like, a little shank and a B10S, you know, like I was tying like conehead zonkers like that, just so I could get a little more length than what's provided with this. With that. Yeah. A little bit of kick and it, it gives you the length provided that, cause this doesn't give you much hook shank to do it. So now you're at two inches cone with a hook with actual gap, because when those bigger fish are eating that little thing, that 93, 95, you gotta be on them to hook them. You got a hammer. And most of my, a lot of the guys I'm taking, like, they're They're, they're not, so surprised by the bite, they don't hammer it. I know. And they don't see the fish coming to be ready for it. Right. Like, if you're tracking and you see the flash and you're like, okay, something's coming, something's coming, you're tight and you're ready. You know, if you're just like, oh, my, you know. You get caught with your pants down on that 93, 95. And yes. It's and not. It's, it's you not have good. to be. Your head has to be in the game. Yep. You have to be completely yep. focused. And the problem is, honestly. No. You know, your bite. When you know, like you're so far in between bites that when it happens, you're usually you're not, not prepared. Yeah, when I caught a lot of fish on it, I just got away from it. Yep, I didn't catch a ton of big fish. Seems like those work all right on smaller fish. It's like those bigger fish, there's too much jaw, it just doesn't find a happy spot very often. Hmm. So then I'm trimming that down. Um, the other thing I did is I always do this. Right you're giving that I thing a serious on. head haircut. Are you cutting the whole brush while you're at it? I mean. No, but oh. more than I needed to. Um, the other thing I did is I always switch to some thin GSP before I do the head because I can just finish it off in a tiny little spot at the head versus using this thicker Danville. Right. And you can't break it, so I can really crank down on that wire. So I do usually do that. I put a couple bit finishes in there, then that's all secure and done. I guess you could add glue if you needed. I've never needed to. Seems everything seems to be. And I don't like doing GSP for the whole thing because it's too slick and everything wants to slide Every slides off. off and you it can't turns do around. the GSP with the it spins. reverse tie. It, no, it, it just, spins no, too it's, much. It's bad. Yeah, that might even be a little long, but whatever. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, and that's about three wraps, and that should be about all you need. Right about. And then you can really crank down on that little spot. You, know, you kind of find the happy spot in the... In the wire? In the brush? Yeah, in the brush. Yep. So it just kind of, you know, it's like taking Sinks your in. thread through a reverse tie. You just kind of got to wiggle it around and find the happy spot. Wiggle it. <laughs> My wife married a juvenile. <laughs> ah, who forgot wire cutters? Ah, no. Just use your scissors. <laughs> Don't worry, I got scissors for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I like these scissors. Anymore. Well, I'll take this. I'll take while you're digging. I'll take this opportunity to answer a few questions. Uh, we did have a request about a uh, holiday themed where we dress up. I think. Uh, I, I don't. I know. I know, but but you, let's right? entertain it for a second. Like, day, would man. you be, you'd probably be Santa and I'd be an elf or something, I guess. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen. It'd I don't be a think, little weird. I think Matt should dress up every day. <laughs> I do. It'd be bad Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Billy would, Bob Thornton, bad Santa. Be. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> I, I think that's taking it too far. And then uh, Chris, did, Chris re-asked <laughs> the question about why not tie the entire fly in GSP and well, I think it's just the that. it we did it's just the the slickness and yep. Yep. and you cannot reverse tie bucktail you want thick you want something the that's problem tattier. is and what Alex is talking about is building the cone yep in yep. front you yep. can wrap it but it's the cone yep. in front that you need to reverse you have it back. to have yep. that thicker 
material, the thicker thread to build it back right. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, I'm just not a, you know, not a true believer in the GSP. I think it's got great applications in certain situations, but I'm not using it for everything. I go through a lot more Danville in a year than I do GSP. Hand whip finish. Look at you. Oh, yeah. Real professional. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, I don't know was, if it's bad that we start laughing. <laughs> yeah. No, Rusty taught me that a million years ago. Because if you're production tying, why would you want to pick up another right. tool? Like, he would be bitching I, at me for putting my scissors down. I know. But yeah. a lot of these Dr. Slick scissors are too sharp on the insides and will cut your thread when you go to pull on it. That's why I use those the Spirit River, ones. like, yeah. the ones that I yeah. use. I, I take my thumb out. I can't do that. No? Feaster does that, and he can spin it oh, all yeah. around. Yeah, I just flip it to the backside. No, I can't I, do that. And I yeah. have, I don't know. You could probably flip a pencil, or yeah. like you'd be a drummer yeah. going like, Ooh. Yeah, maybe you're a drummer. Maybe I can't do that shit. Like, I, I can hold these. and. Why don't you go be a drummer, man? Right. <laughs> Bye. The there was a time. Drummer boy. <laughs> there was a time. Go be a drummer, drummer boy. <laughs> go tie flies and listen to Neil Pert, okay? You guys relax. <laughs> 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 go be a drummer. Uh, you we know didn't what have... would really look good on there? Alex? Some eyes. Yeah, they would. <laughs> you, go. you know, the Instagram would blow up if you put eyes oh, on that man. thing. <laughs> what Alex So many put internet eyes. friends. <laughs> Probably a lot of Russians. <laughs> <hit me up. laughs> Don't you think? Yeah. It'd be real popular <laughs> Like Russia. stealing your credit card. <laughs> yeah, good. Man. Those Russians love those eyes on those people. Oh, my uh, gosh. No, that looks sharp. Yeah, but it's just a single. You know, whatever. Stupid. Doesn't matter. But it's easy. It kicks nice. Easy to tie. You can bust them out, and uh, they work. All right. Should we bust one out? You want me to? Let's just one? let's tie one in real time. Yeah. We mm. hardly ever do this. It's yeah. I, I feel like I need to put a timer up here, but it'd it's, be, it's there, too much okay. tech. All right. Uh, while you're prepping that, we did have a question uh, from Nathan about adding weight to the back, kind of like uh, Grajewski does. You know, he'll yeah. either use. Um, you don't need to do that. No. Okay. Because I know no. he'll either use a rattle on the back end oh, yeah. sometimes you off the back. Side side kick, okay. And you don't need it. You're getting it with the brush head and the fact right. that there's nothing back there. The less drag you have the back there, which is just a feather, you know, you have no drag. When right. you have a bunch of crap coming out the back, now you need something to move it forward. So th there's two ways of doing it. Add weight in the back to get it to swing or put less off the back. You know, I can understand why you might want to add more in the back for a musky fly, so you can build out that profile a little bit bigger. In the and back. I think that's yeah where he's doing it is is yeah, some of the musky. I, I just go thinner on the back and run the brush, and the brush will make it dive. You know, like that's because I've got some big. Yeah, I didn't get them quite big enough, so they're more pipe. You know, like in the nine to ten inch range, and they're still boom. You know, they'll still do the side. Mm hmm. Mm. And then I know one of our employees, Joe, actually wanted me to ask about, and I'm going to screw this up. Uh, it, what the fly position tends to be in the water when you see it eaten most. If that Does that make sense? You know, it's orientation in the current when you Not see moving. it. It's, I mean, like, <laughs> pause. Okay. That's fine. Even yeah. with trout, it's the pause. Yeah. Always the stall. That's you, like their natural behavior of a brown trout is to eat when something is dead drifting. You have to give them a chance to eat. Like, I had a client, older guy, who's fished around the world, and he's like, I fished around the world for Atlantic, Steelhead, and brown trout, doing the sea run stuff and everything. He told me, those damn rainbows like it on the dangle. <clears throat> Atlantics, ooh, they want it hard. They want it, that thing coming hard on the swing. And he said, everywhere I've been in fish brown trout, you got to give it some dead drift. And I'm like, makes total sense. So I get it in their feeding zone and kill it. I'll pop it to get there so I can get it to tsh, tsh, whatever, turn, dive, dodge, whatever, and then stall. And usually it's just sitting there drifting. And they boom, need it. I mean, that's just how they eat. And I Natural think that's that's, their, I think like, that's a really key thing that a lot of people miss uh, they don't know is they just keep, uh, keep stripping, stripping it hard well, you know, and, and they don't they don't embrace the stall. Think about so this is what you need to do as a as an angler. Like you think about you're fishing that as a bait. 
right? This yeah. is a bait. Like yeah. you're trying to bait this fish in. Mm-hmm. You want to make it look natural. And if you watch minnows, you watch bait fish, you watch small fish, they dart, dart, and then they stop. And then they dart, dart, and then they stop. So if you can get into that rhythm with your strips and create that stall point that's not too long, then you have a better bite window for that fly. And and people just, like, just strip mindlessly, right? You know, like, Zombie you get into that, like, robot casting, robot stripping, sure. and you don't think about it. It's the same reason why you should take a look at where you're placing the fly. You know, think about that. Think about the ambush point for a trout. Think about pulling it off that log and giving it a stop. Give Which it can change pause. seasonally. And it ambush can. point can change seasonal. Absolutely. Or during the day. Yeah, throughout the course throughout of the day. Throughout the course sure. of the day, you might like at the, f- you know, early morning. Let's say you're going out early morning. They'll sit kind of more at the head of that pool because they're, you know, maybe coming off that daylight hour versus l- later on in the day, they're at, like down deep at the tail out. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's been my experience many times. I don't know. What yeah, do you they think, go Alex, from an edge that? to a hole. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's. Light gets bright, go deeper. Everything does that. Everything. Yeah, and that's, you know, it's people that's, yeah, you can talk about that zombie fishing. Like, it's just not that, it shouldn't be that mindless. No, you should stay engaged. You should stay engaged. You should be thinking every time. Like, the people who just zombie fish never catch anything. I've had clients who could. Like, I had guys, you know, one guy, two guys at equal ability, and one, like, fished his fly all the way back. The other one stripped it. One guy got bit all the time. The other guy never got bit. You know, it's just what it is. It's like you're just zombie fishing. you got to, hey, look, current scene, boil, bubble line. Like, think, rock. Like, make your fly go into more spots while you're fishing. Like, you get on a big river where you're making a long cast. Make your fly go into more spots. Hit more spots. Don't just go to the bank and think that's where it's going to happen. How many big fish really come off a bank in a given year? Joe actually just tuned in and asked a question as well. If he, if you will ever feed line on a long stall. I mean, uh, introducing yeah, yeah, slacks kind of. Yeah, yes and no. Like, it really depends. More of that depends on boat speed. If the boat is going too slow, then yeah, I can see doing it. Because then you're swinging it not. So if you get into the right spot and you got to feed a little bit to, you know, extend your dead drift into the spot, sure, maybe you would. You don't want to get in the habit of throwing slack out there because slack is your enemy. Slack is enemy. It is slack the enemy. is your enemy. It is. And everything other than dry fly... Fishing and to some degree nymph fishing, you know, bobber nymph, not like tight, right? But like you know, bobber, like that thing we call fly fishing, (laughs) (laughs) just really like you know, bobber fishing. Oh, it's uh, whatever. I think we call that fly fishing. Do we? Um, We don't do a whole lot of that here in the Midwest. Thank goodness. You can't. I get about four trips a year that I go to Mayo, and I'm like, and I got some guys who are like, oh, you know, they're like, I ain't doing that street. Nah. You know, older guys. So I'm like, all right, here's this. And they're like, wow, this is great. I'm like, oh, yeah. I went to the Green River this year, and the guy's like, so do you indicator fish? I'm like, nope. He's yeah. like, Perfect. We're throwing dry flies. I'm Good. Like, do you streamer fish? He's like, yep. I'm like, perfect. Dry well, flies and streamers. No, yep, I feel fine. right at that's home. That's all we need. Yeah, I watch a lot of that. That's eh, whatever. What you know, is. and everybody's throwing bobbers, and we're, like, catching fish on dry flies or streamers, and they're, like, you know, looking at us like, what are you doing? Oh, my God. Don't my favorite is was always watching people try and cast <laughs> the bobber a bobber rig. rig. A I mean, rig? you know, when you got a – even when a balloon rig. A balloon and it's rig. Just, like, I, I saw mean, a guy – your shoulder out. I oh saw a gosh. guy oh. lose it on his clients, <laughs> and I was like, Wow. <laughs> Like holy Atta crap! Boy. Atta boy. You make sure what they... did you not understand about? Do not cast now. Set it and, and forget it. I was it. like, wow, man! Like oh, you he's had a long some... season. <laughs> yeah, and were you there funny. August or was Great it July? Way to make sure they never oh. come back. <laughs> wow! Great way to make sure they never come. You back. You could Good see job. the guys. I was close enough. I could see the guys' face turn red. 
I was Ooh. like, Ooh, man, that guy's not getting tipped today. Yeah, well, he probably doesn't care. I'm going to run yeah. these two off today. <laughs> ah, there's plenty of them out there. I'm going to run these two off today. Uh, this one's a little bit more appropriate. I kind of like this... Uh, that little tail on there, Alex. Yeah, a little, you see that? Yeah, arts and craftsy. Arts and crafts, <laughs> arts and crafts. <laughs> I like the whole olive and white. Yeah, it's... That's a tough one to beat. It's a tough one, yeah. yeah. Some days they really want that straight white, though. I know. I think that's a overlooked. Yeah, it's, it's... It is. And there's. it's always fascinating me. fascinating to me how many color schemes some of us fish that are not produced by fly companies yes mm. which is i mean not that when you know chartreuse and black black and red yeah black and chartreuse yeah 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 a lot of people do copper and black copper black and, and black gets a yep. little yeah the train you, you gotta go with uh, the uh, oh, yeah. nice you nice. gotta go with <laughs> fly rock. the no it's the the um the, i know what you're talking about the T top trans the T-top yeah. trans with the big like, like eagle he's wings there down <laughs> loaded up and trying yeah. <laughs> you know you got to go with the uh, what is that smoky and the bandit color man you yeah, that's the smoky and the bandit yeah. no but you know flies get produced because they sell it's, that's what it is we're okay with that yeah i'm just saying i mean we, we sell do flies, sell, we're a fly shop. do happen yeah. to sell flies so no, but we good. really kind of do we do those yeah one of the I had one color of that catch deceiver I did was like a brown and tan. The guys caught them good on them. every year. Somebody gets a big one on one of those down in Arkansas. What do you call that one? Like the butt stain or what? I don't know. Oh my God. The skid mark. Suck man. It's like a suck man. It looks like a sucker. Ooh, it does. Do you ever do pink like down there? I don't. I, pink it like from what, everything I ever hear. So like I know why the guys the musky guys run pink. It's like pink is my color for musky. It's like it is that, so and, wow. There's a one of the minnows in Virginia gets a pink hue to it in the winter. That is where that kind of started. Olive and pink. Okay. Olive and pink. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. And that kind of looks rainbowish too. Yep. But they're fishing. There's like some minnow. I don't know if it's a fall fish or what it is. Um, but then also the guys in Wisconsin like pink for muskies, but they're fishing that tannic dirty water, which well, is what that's you're like fishing. a UP. Yep. yep. And I'm fishing clear water. Yeah. True. You know, like I'm yep. fishing clear water. Like, I'm not gonna catch one today. <laughs> <laughs> There's bottom. It's 15 feet here. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't give you much faith, but. No, there, there's, yeah, some pink. Yeah, yeah, and I know that my buddy Paula caught some fish with Willen on that pink and olive over there and Wisco. Is there a specific thickness you're looking for for that? No, this is bunch, not or? very good buck hair. This is like just, I got to buy some more. I'm just trying to burn through what I've got. This is a little thinner than I'd like, but, uh, or do you mean thickness as in? Yeah, just the clump you're working with. I mean, it's, it's actually. More than I expected, honestly. It's, it's but you're reversing reverse it. That's why. That's yeah, why. exactly. Yep. Because when you're not reverse tying it, that's when you go really thin. When you're yep. reverse tying it, you got to give it a little bit more. And or, so you're or, trimming up the tips a little bit. Of course, this is. And if you haven't done reverse, yeah, reverse you tying, you got to trim your tips up a little bit. Yep. You know, so and, that you don't get too big of a ball behind there. So as you wrap back onto the cone, it doesn't bulk up weird. But you have to have enough back there so you can build yep. it up, right? Yeah. It's that yep. fine line. It's bucktail's one of those materials. That's too much will kill you. You know, when you're straight just stacking it in there, I use so little. I use about three times as much probably when you're reverse tying it. But you're trying to get a full cone out of it instead of just a little chunk here, a little chunk there. You know, this is supposed to be a 360 profile, which I mean, I don't know that it really matters. It just helps it keep that build the longer it sits in your box. Once again, the dead fly hair factor. Fancy. Find mahogany. I think Chad gave me this. He's like, oh, one of my buddies making them. And he's like, oh, hell, you'd have one. 
no, no, you should just scrape. And I'm like, I got this plastic thing. He's like, oh, come on. <laughs> it's beautiful. But I got this $2 plastic thing. He's like, no, come on. I broke a pen. It works. <laughs> yeah. It's a broken pen, man. <laughs> a bit. Chew the back of that pen off. It was great. I had to get high when I was doing it. I don't know. Yeah, this one I kind of crowded a little bit, so I'll be a little tight with the... Uh, we'll see. A little tight. A little out uh, of... A little too far forward but you know i'm always kind of checking like what i'm doing when i pull that buck hair forward too is just kind of checking to make sure it's not getting bunched up in one section weird because that'll happen to you if you're not kind of on it you want to keep that make sure you're going back and it's kind of every wrap is behind itself evenly so that it doesn't look like trash when it's done not that it would matter but if it looked like trash, it would be the first one I reached for for somebody to throw on a tree. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, well, we're not going to motor back for that. I didn't like that one anyway. You sure? I'm sure. It's just a trout fly, dude. Who cares? And this is that, excuse me, this is that cone we were talking about there that really. Yeah, that's what. And what I've found, you know, if you if you haven't done this, again, this is a, a really helpful thing to learn is reversing bucktail. It, it's nice. It creates this, uh, you know, support system. You can put you can put flash on this. You can put craft fur, which is what Alex is using here. But I've kind of straight, a little bit of, you know, watching the angle of your bobbin can be real important when you're doing that because then you – because. He said it's he's going for a 360 profile here, so he kind of wants all around, yeah. you know, about the same flare, if you will. Yeah. And if you if you have a real even angle, it's you know, kind of that specific 90 degree setup, it it makes a really big difference. And even, I mean, it's never perfect, but nothing ever it's is. Ne I mean, mine's not. I know yours is, but I said nothing ever <laughs> is. <laughs> I said Matt's never is. <laughs> I should. Where's that mute button again? Where is that? That's <laughs> on, this erase. What's this button do? <laughs> I oh, turned the sound boy. effects down. Oh, so dang it, I want some I sound effects. <laughs> we need. We need to figure out the sound effects thing. Oh boy, Matt's worried already. <laughs> now. No, An hour gonna... and forty minutes in. I'm worried now. No, I'm not worried. We're gonna set the studio up in my house. It's gonna be. I haven't fun. really been here that long, have I? Yeah. yeah time yeah. flies when you're having fun, Alex. Time is it? We've been doing this an hour and thirty-seven minutes. No. I don't know. It's like nine oh eight. Way past my bedtime. I was shooting for eight thirty in bed by nine. <laughs> All right, we'll get you out of here. <laughs> I don't want you to. Sit and I'm closing don't the turn questions into a now. <laughs> yeah, I was up at five. I had to drive eight million fucking miles. What was it? 190 miles yeah, round 190 trip. 190 mile round trip. It's awesome. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, well, it was better today than say it could be icy out there. That's yeah. always yeah. fun. Do you have much fog? Oh god, man! I had it about fog. 10, 15 feet of visibility on 72 on the way yeah. in. Oh yeah, yeah. that this. was all of Kalkaska. Yeah. Well, you know, kind of from Grayling to Kalkaska. Yeah. And then I kind of snuck down the hill around Skagmog, and I'm like, oh, thank God. Oh, it was bad. Like, really focusing to see a, a line on the yeah. side of the road. Like, yeah. Cool. Ooh, that looks good with that olive and white. Yeah, the halo. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a halo effect. You may get some eyes for that. No, I don't think so. No. <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to put them. I, I love how this program kind of turns into us trolling the tires. Good. That's a good way it's to make sure they show up next year. Right? That's yeah. right. Especially after a hard day at work. Oh, yeah, that's good. Can't wait for next now year. Now I feel so badly. Alex, you're so thin skinned. Yeah, yeah, I'm really emotionally scarred here. Hey, oh, let me man. give you some money for a therapy session yeah, after I'm this. Need oh, my it. gosh. <laughs> Tell my wife to hide the pistol. <laughs> They let you have guns. <laughs> oh Honey, you better hide the ammo. I had a really rough day. Brian was mean to me. <laughs> oh, no. oh, my God. The kids picked on me. I don't know what yeah, to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to drive into a tree on the way home. 
<laughs> hey, you want me to drive you home, Alex? Yeah. We're, we're you me. I'll get a <laughs> handle of vodka. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, that, that looks really good. Yeah, it takes a little bit of shuffling to get. So you're kind of stacking that craft yeah, right there. That's the craft. Kind of align the tips there. Yeah. So you're going to go white oh. on the underbelly there. Nice. Dark top has to, it always has to be dark. Oh, okay. Always dark. So much for fishing in the round here, but uh, well, think about it. Yeah, I, it's a white metal belly. Hmm. White belly, yellow belly. I know. Come on. Yeah. What you doing? Go crazy and put like you know, peacock some, curl over the top. I used to do like a little yeah. pink gill on the side. Oh my yeah. gosh, that was so pretty. Do a little, a little caught, red. Caught exactly zero more fish. <laughs> <laughs> Sort of like eyes. Sort of like eyes. How am I going to sell eyes, Alec? I got a like, oh, shop man, full of you eyes. Should send them back. You're useless. <laughs> oh, some people think they don't need it. Oh well, like, they're gosh. bored and don't ever fish, you know, and just spend the winter tying. Yeah, sure. Have fun. I'm going to spend a half an hour to 45 minutes on each fly. Yeah. It's a great one. Oh, man. That's good. Yeah, I did kind of. It's going to be a little tight, but that's why we use GSP. Now. Man, that looks good. That's why we use GSP now, is because you can get a little tight and you need about three wraps and everything's locked solid. Does everything you want to do. Yep. Yep. Kind of like the George Foreman girl said it. Forget yeah. it. Yeah. That's Ron Papil. It's the. Uh, you don't yeah, even have. Yeah. That's the exclusive uh, food cooker at your house, isn't it? That's, uh, no, I have a microwave. Oh, nice, nice. That's and in crock pots. I do a lot of crock pot cooking. It is, it's the season. Tis the season. <sighs> Reminder, if you have, if you're just joining us, Brian has had the crock pots go. I <laughs> do have the crock pots going first. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. tomorrow night is men's night. If you're in northern Michigan. White bean chicken chili. The shop, is, we're going to after hours, northern angler. Um, Brian Exotic will be here. Um, do you have the hot beer girls again? No. <laughs> Not this year. Oh, that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. That was several years ago. With the Fogarelli well, staff at that was back when beers. Logan was or Logan. That was back when Russ was still drinking. <laughs> yes. You would have probably been about in his prime. <laughs> he right was there. he was I holding court that there. That was about ten years ago. Eleven. Could've that was like, might have been, been eleven yeah, years ago. Yeah. I think I did the math the other day. I think I I don't think I've drank in like fifteen years. Man. That's good for you, dude. Uh, about that, well, you know, could have been the biggest mistake of my life. I'll well, wait till I hit seventy and I'll buy a gallon of vodka and see how we do. I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> I think it's a great I idea. I don't think that's a good idea whatsoever. It's wonderful. Uh, my wife hasn't left me by then. I bet I can sure that up in no time. <laughs> I I don't think you should tempt her. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Probably should. Sarah's a very patient woman. Oh. This has gone so many places. I did not expect it to go today. <laughs> this is what, well, we're, we're but working on. You know what? I should have known. You know, let's something. let's let's make sure Alex does this after a guide trip. That was my my first mistake, probably. I think. Yeah, so that was a tough one. He only had to do the guide trip because it's supposed to blow sixty miles an hour tomorrow, yeah, and he was gracious enough to show up. And we're supposed to get like... a thunderstorm tonight. It's December fifteenth. I know, and I thought it would be better today, but you know, it's always hard to say, especially before the storm, right? I don't yeah. think that storm's coming. It was a big falling barometer today, and then tomorrow's just screaming nor up. Yeah, and then I can't believe it didn't just crush it today. Yeah, I, you know, the water was dirty when we got down a ways, mm. hmm. and I don't. It, Do you think it like the water temperature drop with the snow? I don't know. That... I don't think there's fish in half those. No, water temps been rising good. I don't think there's fish in half that river. I mm. think it sucks. But there's fish in other parts of the river. You know, it's just it's a tough one, man. That place, oh boy. There's a bunch of nice fish down there. But they also got they have been completely lacerated. Completely. It's been a busy summer on all the rivers Dude, here. And, and and all the rivers everywhere, yeah. honestly. Fall, winter. There were two boats behind us today. Oh my gosh. There ain't no breaks. And it's the middle of December. Yeah. Like mm. I kind of start feeling bad for him. Uh oh. Running out of GSP. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's a there go. he's a professional, ladies and gentlemen. Where's the Look applause button? I don't remember <laughs> oh, which one it is. On, it's it. I think it's, it's like, 
Yeah, hey. oh, I nailed it. There we go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the most out of your stuff. I That's did, right. I crammed the eye a little bit on this one, but whatever. It's fine. I can still fit something through there. I knew that was going to be an issue. But there we go. Yeah, there we go. Done. Can't tie anymore. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Perfect timing. Bedtime. <laughs> Do you want me to go home and read you a bedtime story? No. No. My wife I'll tuck you in. <laughs> my wife will be nice to me. To counsel me through this, I think Joyce has met my wife, Joyce Haxton. Oh yeah, I'm sure she has. We, I hope we lost Joyce a long time ago. This got really no, dark. I'm just kidding. Crazy. <laughs> oh, no. She likes your crazy. Oh, Joyce she is awesome. She thinks it's entertaining. She's like, God, you losers. <laughs> so I think that's probably why she's. That's why she hires us. Like, These guys are oh, just. She weird. feels bad they for need us. Help. They need These help. These guys are weird. <laughs> weird they are. We're possessed. No, we're all crazy. That's we are. Right. And we, we've realized that we could never work for somebody else, so here we are. You got a whole bunch of misfits. We are the land of misfits toys. Oh, <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> oh, you can't work with anybody or for anybody, and most people have, most of them have a real drinking problem or did. Um, yeah, well, you might as well be a fishing guide. Might as well. But I think we're seeking out rehab quicker now. Most of the old guys just died at 55. Oh, my. That's what happened to a lot of them anyway. Back in the day. Ones I knew. You know, it's not, not, oof. Yikes. It was kind of rough. I hit that button twice. There you go. Oh, he's got a little white knowledge. Ooh. Nice, That's Alex. more the size I've been trying to tie him to. It's like just a little bit smaller. Three inches maybe, two and a half, whatever. It's, you know, nice and easy. Whatever. A little minner. That's that. Not All right. Much, nothing really new or special, but a little different way to tie them. You need something a little smaller. And uh, I have had a bunch of days where it was like, that's what they would eat. And like Brian was saying earlier, it was late, you know, like later in the day. You get a couple hours where they're chomping stuff, and all of a sudden it seems like it's dead, and get desperate and put something like that on. You're like, oh, they didn't go anywhere. Imagine yeah. that. Hmm. For so, sure. Saved the day a couple times. Made a very long afternoon into not as bad. Well, thanks, Alex. Hey, thank you guys. Thanks for having me, Brian. You really cheered me up tonight. <laughs> no, Cheers. seriously, dude. It was, it's always fun to hang out. <laughs> always. Shoot always, the breeze, always, you know. Yep. Like, nice. learn some yeah. new things yeah, and, like, yeah, sure. lots you know, learn. rehash uh, yeah. lots of, of things that we both have questions about. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, so it's like a therapy session. Sort of. Sort of. With people watching. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like but a train wreck they see. can't yeah. turn it off just, exactly. right? don't <laughs> turn it off whatever it's like that train's is. coming in your right ah, you're like oh my god what's he gonna say next <laughs> five minutes later it runs you over that's great <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> too much fun <laughs> too much fun all right well thanks everyone for uh for sticking it out we had yeah i mean <laughs> There's still 60 people watching right now. Somehow, I don't. I wow. mean, I feel for them. <laughs> they probably feel bad for us. The only they there probably so fell asleep. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's I probably past their bad bedtime gun. too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, thank it's you, everyone. Uh, always fun. Uh, having Just Alex. Russian bots. <laughs> oh, he the bots. bots. <laughs> we have them. In, oh, I'm not even gonna say it. Nope. Nope. Have, nope. nope. Not going to say it. It popped in my head. Nope. In uh, if you get a chance, check out Alex on Instagram, AL Fishing, I believe, or Fly Fishing. I don't He's know. He's not a, really sure. There was a new thing, too, with Alex, though, with the. Uh, oh, what was that? It was the Flyman. Flyman just had a really oh, cool that little was thing. A, that was one I did a while ago, but they, yeah, they yeah. reposted that little blog thing. That I was did pretty cool. Years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they probably anyway. give up on me. Yeah. At this point. And if you got then what's great is Alex is here in town, you know, and if you have questions, yeah, you know, email. about these flies, you can leave comments down below. If you're watching this later, uh, you know, if you got your, uh, your, your two hours of free time and, uh, <laughs> we will pass those on to Alex and, uh, figure out what's going on. Five minutes <laughs> But thanks for tuning in, everyone. Yeah. And uh, we, we really appreciate the support. Uh, we really small. do. Yeah. Uh, and take, uh, take care oh, of your local fly shops. By the way, next week we'll be joined by John Ray. John Ray. 
So next Wednesday, same time, same place, YouTube, seven thirty Eastern. Yeah, that's all, right. all I got. Uh, let's see. Oh, we got tons of thanks coming in in the comments, Alex. Everybody loves you. So oh, right. I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We really appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. If I hit the right button, let's do this. Oh, look uh, at the soundboard. Oh, it's it lights up. You know. We're going to do a fade to black now. Oh, yeah. I'm going to fade everybody's mics out so you can say whatever you want.